So after having prepared my MDF board, I've now trimmed it to the size that I want. And I'm going to use this for an abstract painting. Uh, but before I begin my painting in earnest, I like to um, put on a ground colour coat. And in general, I use a Venetian red or Indian red. And I just grab a piece of rag, just dampen it. And start to rub it on the board. So you can see we're getting a nice warm reddish brown colour. I don't worry about it being even. I prefer the actual sort of patterns that the, the rubbing creates. And I just want a, a light, a light covering to give me this very warm reddish brown ground on which to begin my painting. And this is going to be an abstract, so I don't have to be too fussy, not that I and all that fussy uh, when I'm doing a traditional or a classical painting. The only difference being that in areas that are going to be dark, I'm a little heavier with the paint, and in areas that are going to be light, or in which my figure, the area in which my figure is sitting, then I'm I rub lightly in those areas. So there we go. That's covered. It's almost an abstract in itself. Uh, but we'll just let that dry. And then we'll begin our drawing. So here I have my warm red ground. And now I'm going to roughly sketch out my idea for my abstract. Okay, so it's pretty simple. That's a rough idea. There's a kind of a landscape feel to it. Maybe rolling hills, something like that. Uh, we'll just see how it develops as we go along. Paintings often take their own course. They kind of, after you have the initial idea, they kind of end up directing their own way to go. And you just have to be open to listening to that. Um, so now it's more about colours and uh, where, we, where we apply those colours, how many colours we're going to use. And we'll just see how it develops. So there we go, I've started laying on some colour. Started with um, nice solid blacks. I think I'm going to fill this area with a, a warm grey.
Okay, so there we go. We have a nice warmish grey in there now, and we've created what I would call a positive space. So the temptation might be to fill these uh, other similar shapes with positive space colour. But I think looking at it, to, to we want to go against that. Well, I, I want to go against that. So I'm thinking I'm going to turn a certain amount of this area back into a negative space. And so I'm going to add white or a light cream to some of these shapes here. So, the, the, so these two spaces will be sort of butting heads, so to speak. Bearing in mind, these are just the first coats, so we can always change your mind, change your colour later on, once it's dry. Um, I'm not being too fussy, you see I add in uh, other colours that are, that's uh, are consistent with the warm red of the background and also just 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 mixes it up a bit a, a flat black just would have been uninteresting so I try to uh, add contaminants so to speak into my my areas so we'll add some white either side of this and we'll just see what it looks like Okay, so there's our white, which uh, is marking out your negative space. And you'll see a little bit of what I was talking about of the painting starting to direct its own uh, future. And then as I got close to putting the white next to the black here, I realised that this kind of warm key line was looking quite nice and so I've left that there and then included a key line in this shape here so in that way that the painting starts to tell you what to do um, I still think maybe it's a little bit balanced and it's a it's difficult sometimes you, you want to find that that balance between order and, and chaos so I think I need just a little bit more white on this side and uh, we'll keep going and we'll see, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. So what we have is uh, the central area of, of, of a very dark tone surrounded by two areas of light tone I guess this takes up about I don't know about 25% of the painting uh, similar with the white the light tone um, so they're about equal so we have the rest of the painting to fill in um, I'm thinking to keep it at a mid-tone so we have 50% mid-tone 20, 25% dark tone, 20, 25% light tone we'll just see how we go, I kind of like the warm colour so I'm going to stick with that, I've mixed myself up a little bit of orange and um, I'm going to put this around and we'll just see what that looks like I'll probably keep this key line going right the way around. Now we'll just start and we'll see how we go.
Okay, so here we have the painting all filled in. This would be called our base coat if we were oil painting. But uh, for acrylic, this is just the first layer. Now that I can visually see what the painting looks like, and I'm happy with the colour scheme, I'll go ahead and apply top layers just to solidify the painting and to cover up a bit more of the, the ground, which you can still see through. But I still want that to show through, but not as much. I'm also uh, going to cream or add some cream to the white. I think it's a little bit too stark, so I'll just um, soften that a little with some cream. And you can see here too how this shape and, and this shape have combined to make a, another uh, hillock pattern there. So the painting is, is um, as I said before, sometimes dictates itself what it's going to be, be like. Uh, you can still see pencil lines under the paint, but that's okay. It's an abstract and um, it kind of adds to it, I feel. You could even do more pencil lines if you wanted to and, and use that as a technique and, um, and just scribble on it a bit more. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm happy with it as it is. I just need to block in the colours a bit stronger and to make this um, not so starkly white. Okay, so there's our finished abstract painting. Well, finished, uh, I've got to sign it and of course varnish it. And uh, I think it'll look nice with a little thin black uh, frame around it just to act as a key line. You can see that I've, um, with the second coat, I've added a bit of Naples yellow to the white just to soften that a little bit. I've kept some nice sort of mottled contamination of colour, so it's not all a flat, even colour, it has blotches in it. Uh, I've used uh, in Indian red in the black and in the grey. Uh, the Naples yellow in the white uh, goes with the Naples, Naples yellow as the key line. I've made the orange a little darker because I've uh, added cream instead of stark white. I've also knocked back the the orange, so that's uh, a, a little darker as well, just to offset the fact that I've uh, creamed up the white. Other than that, there's your abstract. Um, I think it looked quite nice on a modern wall, uh, very bright. Red tends, tends to be a colour that sells quite well, I don't know why, maybe just because it, it brightens the wall up. But um, there you go. A lot of people might say, well, you know, I can do that. Well, probably what they mean is I could copy that. Or whether they could do something out of their own head all by themselves from start to finish and create their own abstract out of nothing. I don't know. So um, give it a go. Just remember colour coordination composition and you don't have to be too technically brilliant with your with your brush strokes in fact the sometimes the rougher the better okay good luck